The Lord be with you. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are grateful for your presence in the sanctuary this morning. We are grateful for the presence of those who are worshiping with us through the live streaming opportunity of the internet, and we are grateful for those who will um, tune in later to the uh, YouTube opportunity through the church's website and the internet uh, to worship at a time uh, and an hour that is different from this. Um, but here in the sanctuary or wherever God's people are gathered, um, we are uh, together in the spirit of our Lord, and we are worshiping God um, as God's people have across the centuries. There are a few announcements as we begin this morning. First, I will call your attention, and we are a little spread out, but if you're closest to the center aisle, there should be a, a black notebook that is here and um, if, or is, that is there, and if you would reach for that and give us a signature and any pertinent information that you would like to share, uh, the church staff will get back with you on that. Uh, related to the office and our contact information, if you turn to page three on the inside of your service leaflet, you'll see that there are three, three paragraph announcements that are printed there. Uh, one is that today is the uh, 40th anniversary of the beginning of the handbell ministry at this church. And uh, Christine Larson, our current director, will say more about that in just a moment. But the uh, children are welcome in worship paragraph indicates that there are activity bags out in the narthex. Uh, the third paragraph that starts new members is there to uh, convey and communicate that we are open to conversations as a church staff about anyone who would like to be a part of this church or who sees this church as, as a potential um, journeying partners in one's own growth in faith and service as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Pastor Emily's email is there. My email is there. The church phone number is there. If you or someone you know would like to be engaged in a conversation about where you serve in life um, in these days or in this chapter in your life, please be in touch with us. We would be honored to have a, a no pressure and no strings attached conversation with you. And if someone, anyone decides to join and unite with this church, uh, it is an easy process. And we simply meet with the session elders at about 10, 20 before a given worship service. It's really helpful if we have a little advance notice per Sunday, but it is an easy process. If you look on the back of the service leaflet, I would call your attention to where it says chancel flowers, which are to uh, my left and your right here. Uh, the chancel flowers are given uh, in memory of Yolanda Rogers, and Yolanda uh, was uh, the director of the uh, Hambell groups uh, before uh, her illness and death. And not only is Monday the 40th anniversary of the beginning of the ministry of this church, but Tuesday would be uh, Yolanda's birthday. So we give thanks for her life and ministry uh, even today. There is a, a page of announcements that as one of our church volunteers and members said, I like all of this because it says that we are alive and in service. And I think that's correct. If you take the page that has the fewer number of illustrations, uh, the one with the, the ghost here and the church of all ages there. Uh, I'm going to let you take time to read this, but uh, these, the announcements on this page have to do what's with what is still in October. And then there's one announcement on the back page that says, uh, donate candy for trunk or treat. That has to do with October. Everything else on the back page has to do with November, which doesn't mean that you or I do not need to make plans. It just means that if you're trying to keep it organized, there's one October announcement on this page, and uh, all of them on this page are about October. Next Sunday, uh, I've been invited to preach in Navasota. It's 
part of Reformation Sunday, and so uh, the pastor in Navasota, Matt Morris, will be here. Uh, he'll be here leading an, an optional uh, intergenerational church school event at 920 in Fellowship Hall. Uh, our classes may continue to meet, and if you would like to be a part of that, 920 in Fellowship Hall. And then Matt will be uh, preaching in the worship service here as I will be down there. We're grateful for the shared ministry of Jesus Christ that we have with our friends in Grimes County, and many of our folks here have roots with the Navasota Church and with Grimes County, and we are grateful for that. Christine, you would say something about uh, this anniversary. Good morning. All I can say is that the Holy Spirit moves in mysterious ways. Earlier in the year, uh, they let me know it was the 40th anniversary of the handbells. And so we needed to do something about that and we needed to celebrate and the group agreed we should do something with that. Um, we decided we should do something in October. After we had decided we should do something in October, we decided it would be the third Sunday in October. There's a plaque hanging in the Northex that says the bells were dedicated 40 years ago um, in October. And then this morning I find out that 40th anniversary is tomorrow. So the Lord works in mysterious ways. Um, there's a beautiful little um, hand, uh, addition to your bulletin this morning that talks about the handbells, who's in the group, who has been in the group, former ringers and a little history. Um, we'd love it if you take a little look at that. Also too, from that original group 40 years ago, we have ringing with us today, Becky Alter, Dorothy Anderson, and Katie Angler. Thank you for your 40 years. It is an honor and a privilege to lead this group, and we look forward to enhancing worship this morning with our ringing of the bells. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. And um, three announcements go with that. Uh, two are personal. Uh, if, you, if you read the inside right page of this insert, you see that the clerk of session 40 years ago was Z.R. McDonald Jr. Lots of times when you go back and look at clerks of session in minutes that are way back, um, you don't recognize the name or know the person because you're past them and they're back behind you, so to speak, except in the communion of the saints. But Z.R. McDonald Jr. is, I believe, present among us today, just like some of these ringers are. So Randy's got his hand up back there. And Randy, we're grateful for the comprehensive minutes that you have provided. Uh, somebody said to me, were they verbose? I said, no, they are just comprehensive, and thank you. <laughs> and uh, some of you will know uh, uh, Adam Choker. Adam is present with us today, and um, Adam, Adam left here when he was about, what, Adam, 14, for his second run in, after the sabbatical year. When did you move to Australia? In, in 2012, 10 years ago, and um, he is now a, a, um, in the master's program, is that right, at Ohio State University, uh, having uh, received, completed his baccalaureate work, at his bachelor's work at um, Calvin College. And so, uh, he, as a dual citizen, he is back stateside, as we would say, and he's here this weekend, and we're grateful for uh, Adam being here and for the legacy that his family has been as a part of this church. Now, the last thing is that in our call for the offering, we still are not passing offering plates, but there are offering boxes down front and one in the narthex for your financial offerings. We are in the midst of our stewardship emphasis time. And um, for those of you who give online, there is a QR code picture here on the uh, insert on the front page of the insert with the, the ghost up at the top of the page. So for those of you who give online, there is that 
You can leave an offering when we exchange the peace. You can leave a financial offering at the end of the service, especially if you're quick because the ushers take these to count the money. Our financial offerings, though, of course, are but one part of the way we serve God from the calling to faith and hope and love that we have received. Again this morning, friends, we are worshiping God. Our handbells will be accompanying us this morning on our opening anthem, and we're going to leave you seated uh, for that opening anthem. <clears throat> Hymn number 463 stands as one, two, and five of how firm a foundation. As you remain seated, would you join us in singing together? Foundation, ye saints of the Lord, he is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he has said to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled? Fear not, I am with thee, O be not dismayed, for I am thy God, and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand, upheld by my righteous omnipotent hand. The soul that on Jesus hath leaned for repose, I now would you join me in our opening sentences this morning adapted from Psalm 84. The Lord our God is good. Happy are those who love the Lord. The Lord our God is steadfast. In the faithful worshiper God delights. And now would you stand and join us in singing together hymn number 401 here in this place. <laughs>
Our prayer of confession is printed in the bulletin. The letters are bold because we join our voices together. Friends, let us, confessing our sin, let us pray together. Holy God, Lord of love, for not singing when we are joyful, for not shouting to the world the good that you do, for not trusting the love that surrounds us, for not enacting the justice you call us to, for not believing the good news is meant for all. Forgive us, encourage us, and change us. Help us and inspire us that we as disciples will magnify you and rejoice in your everlasting love. Let us give thanks to the Lord. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven.
giving praise this morning and having come before him in our confession and our forgiveness, let us take a moment to pass the peace. And would you join us in singing together our doxology? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly. anthem this morning. Um, we were blessed to have a commissioned piece commemorating this special occasion of the 40th anniversary. I'd been in contact with Tammy Waldrop um, to write this piece for us and when she was asking for some ideas I told her the story that when I was asking what was the first piece you played 40 years ago? The thing that people remembered was that Jane Anderson and Richard Young were getting married and they played Lo How a Rose Air Blooming. Sounds good, right? So I asked Tammy, can you sneak a little bit of that in the piece as a nod to that special occasion? And she did. And if you didn't know it was in here, you wouldn't know it. So be listening for little pieces of Lo How a Rose Air Blooming. So she commissions the piece, we have a handbell clinic, we have working on the piece, and somebody says, well, you know, the first piece we really played was Angelus Bells. Well, I'm sure there's some copyright that goes along with that, so we couldn't use it, so we're sticking with Loha Rose Air Blooming. So, enjoy.
Our scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 84, the first two verses. Let us hear God's word. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, indeed, it faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. And reading also from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 12, at verse 26. At that time, God's voice shook the earth. But now, God has promised, Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks, by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, our God is a consuming fire. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With reverence and awe. These are the ways that we are to worship our God according to the scripture in Hebrews that Ted just read for us. And the Psalm also says, my heart and my flesh sing for joy. These two texts remind me of one of my favorite stories of a medieval monk in France. And that story is called Our Lady's Tumbler. You see, it's a beautiful and remarkable story that has somehow made it through all the ages to us today. Remember, in medieval times, the only people that knew how to write or to read were the monks themselves or appointed scribes. So any intimate stories of what happened in the monasteries back then must have been really good for them to take the time and write them down. Now the story tells us of a spiritual struggle that a particular monk is having. You see, he just joined this convent and he did all of his chores and his prayers with joy. They would go to pray about five times a day and he would stand there in the back a little timid with the other monks, and they would chant and sing, and he thought, okay, I can do this, I can do this. Everything was written for him. And he went out and he did his chores, and he found a sense of peace in doing those chores. There's a certain rhythm to monastic life that helps one to contemplate the wonders of God. However, for this monk, he struggled. Because when he went to his prayer time, he looked around at the other monks and he could see their faces, how they prayed and sang with such passion in them. They were giving the best of their voices and of themselves to God. But he felt that there was something in him that was lacking. He wanted to give just like these other monks. Now, before he became a monk, he was what was called a tumbler. Today, we would call that a gymnast. He could roll and tuck and tumble and spring up again as though he were made of feathers. It was beautiful, but there was no place for tumbling in the monastery. So one day during the prayers, he goes down underneath the sanctuary into the crypt where the tombs are. And he looks up and he sees the statue of the Virgin looking down at him. And he gets down on his knees and he puts his hands on the floor and he says, Holy Mother, if I could give to you something that is pleasing, let me give to you my body. And so there he starts to tumble. He rolls and he tucks and he jumps up and he dances. And he does this every single day. He goes down there in secret hoping he won't be found out because surely he would be in trouble for doing this. And he goes and he sweats and he sings and he tumbles. Well, one day the other monks started to notice that he wasn't there very much during the prayers. 
And so they decided they were going to follow him. And they go down the stairs after he's already started and they peek around the corner, hoping he won't notice them. And what they saw put their jaws on the floor. There this man was tumbling and tucking and jumping and leaping into the air. But that, that was not what surprised them. What they saw was her. She was standing there, looking at him with a pleased, smooth smile on her face, gentle and radiant. There stood the Virgin herself, watching this display and deeply pleased. They immediately turned around, not sure if they should tell the other monks. They couldn't believe it, so they began bringing other monks down there to see for themselves. And eventually, the tumbler himself looked and he saw them peeking around the corner and he straightened up and he started to apologize. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And they said, didn't you see her there? And he said, who? He could not see her, but she was pleased. She was there. I like to think that our worship does the very same, that when we give all of ourselves, God is here smiling with delight at what we have to offer. You know, we are so blessed here in this church to have so many talents among us. Each person in this room brings something different and beautiful, not only to this formal worship space, but to the life of the church. And I hope that God is pleased with those offerings that we have to give. Now today we honor the talents of our handbell choir, which celebrates 40 years of worship in this church. And the gift of musical expression as a form of praise has been celebrated for thousands of years. From Miriam in Exodus, taking her tambourine and leading people in song and dance, all the way through the dancing of King David himself and the songs of the Ephesians, right here to this day, as we sing and listen to the offering of the handbells here in this sanctuary, music, music has always been a gift pleasing to God. Now in two of our, our two scriptures today, we hear of an unshakable God. I want you to imagine for a moment that you have a sifter and you put everything in the world on that sifter and you shake it up. What is going to fall through the cracks and what is going to remain? Everything that we can see and touch here today is going to fall through those cracks. But love, hope, grace, and connection, they are the unshakable gifts of God that will remain when all else has faded away. Next Sunday, the 30th, we celebrate Reformation Sunday. Now the reformers, they knew and they embraced that the word and the things that we cannot see are what are most important. And this is why in the Presbyterian tradition, we so dearly uphold the spoken word. See, the words that I am speaking to you now, they're flowing out of my mouth and into the air, and as soon as they have hit your ears, they disappear. It's like trying to capture smoke. The things which we deem most important cannot be held in our hands. Such is the case with the sound of music. And yes, it does make the hills come alive. <laughs> but music has the power to stir something more deeply alive within us. It has the power to unite us across borders and cultural divides. And it can bring us great joy, moving our feet and our hands. Or it can sit with us in times of deep and heavy sorrow. Music is like magic. There's something even more magical when we can make music together. Now, as Pastor Ted and I were going over the preaching schedule for this month, I specifically asked if I could be the preacher for today. I was very adamant about this because handbells are a very sacred thing in my life and to my ministry. 
See, I first began playing handbells when I was eight years old in the United Methodist Church in Indianapolis. They had a children's handbell choir, and I can still remember walking into that dusty old room and the smell of the handbell polish and the people themselves <laughs> and the voice of director Derek as he taught us musical theory. I hated musical theory. <laughs> and I remember I was given handbells E5 and F5. Those are the handbells in the middle of the treble clef. And to me, they were definitely the most important of all. If you didn't have those, throw out the whole handbell choir, you know? So it was the first instrument that I had ever played alongside someone else. When you think about it, most instruments can be played solo, but handbells are different. Now, at the age of 12, we moved to Arizona, and I had a new church, and my home church did not have a children's or a teenager's handbell choir. So I got to join the handbell choir for the adults. And I remember my very first practice, it was on a Tuesday at 5 p.m., and I walked in to notice that I was the youngest person there by at least 50 years. Now, what I didn't know is that these people that stood around the handbell tables would soon become my family. Every single practice, just as the handbell choir does here at FPC Bryan, we would begin by going around and sharing our joys and our concerns. And then Mrs. H, our handbell director, she would bring us together in a time of prayer, and she would bring in these joys and concerns, voicing every single one. And this opening part of practice, it was just as vital as the practice itself. You would think it's more important to open the folders go through the music, do the warm-ups. But it's just as important that we connect to one another. You see, handbells, it's more than just ringing notes. I mean, they make it look easy, okay? But ringers, they have to trust one another. They have to be vulnerable in front of one another and connect to each other on a level much deeper than one might expect. The fellowship that is created within a handbell group is essential to the well-being of the sounds which will be created. Now, the funny thing about handbells is that not every person actually comes to the table with any gift of musical talent at all. For many people, handbells may be the first and only instrument that they ever learn how to play. The gift of a handbell ringer is found more in the aspect of fellowship that they are able to help create. It is the persistence, the love, and the passion, and the openness to being vulnerable. And one of the things that I love about handbell choirs, and I mean no offense to our ringers here today, they attract very quirky and interesting individuals. I mean, these are the people that know how to put pizzazz into the word unique, all right? See, handbell people, they're a special tribe. And if you look up here on a Sunday that they play, I guarantee you, you're going to see one player who is mouthing the counting very big. One, two, three, four, right? And you've got that other one who's bobbing their head like a chicken. And then you've got the one who's tapping their feet, trying to keep it all together. And you look at the director, and she's just praying that they're watching, right? And then you have the one who notices who just messed up. And the one who messed up notices, and they make this face, right? But these are the things that make such a group so beautiful and fun to work with. Every single handbell choir, there's one of each of those that brings that little element of interesting to the group. They all come in different shapes, sizes, backgrounds, and beliefs, but all of them seem to make a home within the presence of each other. And that is beautiful. You take a, be a group of beautifully broken misfits and you place a handbell in their hands, and now what you have 
is a marvelous group of ding-a-links. So to tell you the truth, if it weren't for those ding-a-lings in my past, I probably would have flat out left the church. I was not a member of my youth group. I didn't fit in with the other kids. I didn't think it was fun. I hated playing games and I hated going to Sunday school. I thought it was boring. But handbell choir, that was where I felt I had my place. That was my home and it became my church. Church is a community of people who choose to come together and share in authenticity, vulnerability, and accountability in praise of our Lord. We shared our joys, we shared our concerns, and we tracked the lives of one another. When one was in the hospital, all the others would make a schedule so that each of us made a visit. When one of us fell on hard times, the rest of us reached around them to help. And when one of us celebrated, you can rest assured that we would all be there, lifting them up and celebrating them, making them feel special. You see, I was one of those lucky kids. I moved to Arizona when I was 12. But at the age of 14, when it came time to choose my confirmation mentor, I had way too many choices to pick from. And when I had a band concert, or when I was in a play at school, I was that kid that got to reserve an entire row for people who wanted to come and see me. These were the people, though vastly older than me, they were my friends. They became my mentors. And though now I am an adult and I have moved away several times over, you can bet that this Thanksgiving, when I go home to Arizona again, I'm going to be sitting down with each of them for lunch, having time to catch up. I call them uncle and aunt. They now have become the extended versions of my family. You see, Handbell Choir is for life no matter where we go or how we age, because it is a family. Now our scripture calls us to worship with reverence and awe. And as Presbyterians, we can easily name the parts of our worship that are reverent, but we may take a pause when we try to think of awe. The music has the power to draw us in, and for a moment, we can lose ourselves within contemplation and love for the divine. Music, it helps us to come together in, in spirit and to experience beauty in unison. To hear it is a blessing, and to know the dedication and the layers of love and care that have been nurtured to compose a group of music makers is to know awe at the blessings of God. Now, not all of us have been in a handbell choir, and not all of us would find any joy in being within a handbell choir. But each of us brings the gifts with us that God has given us. And God calls us to continually use those gifts as tools for reverence and awe within our worship. Now this stewardship season, let us each take a moment and thank God for the gifts that we have and use them to give back to the glory of God's kingdom here on earth. Today, may we thank God for the gifts of those who have been ringing joyful noises here in this sanctuary for 40 years. May we give thanks to those who have directed and given of their time and their lives to the connection, growth, and love of those who worship with gloves on. May we give thanks for the family that we have known, which is not related by blood, but formed by bonds of grace and vulnerability. And may we always strive to worship with the best of ourselves and the giving of ourselves to God. We may not all be ringers, 
but we certainly are all beautifully broken misfits who come here before an unshakable God who gives us the gift of fellowship and love that we might know what it is to be a fellowship of depraved dinglings together. That's what we all are. Own it, name it, love it. And let us praise God with joyful noises that we can offer in both prayer and song. So Lord God, we thank you for the music, for the songs we are ringing and singing. We thank you for the music and for all the joy it has been bringing these 40 years. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who flung the stars in place, giver of light and melody, our praises join with the notes and songs of choirs in heaven and choirs on earth and with the music of the universe. May those who have shared gifts of musical talent and who have devoted time through the years of First Presbyterian's handbell and chimes ministries be affirmed and appreciated. May such efforts continue to enliven and lift the praise of your people, both during occasions of great joy and in experiences of sorrow. We are thankful for those who have contributed to this and other ministries, for those still among us and those who live now in your eternal presence, beheld only by faith. May the notes of instruments and the notes of grace through each human life reach from time to eternity as even one more testimony to the great communion of saints in which you join and hold us all. We express gratitude to you as well for the strength you give each of us for living face forward toward challenges, for helpers and caregivers, for the attentive and the loving, we give thanks because in them we are led to recognize you. May those experiencing illness, injury, grief, and distress encounter those whom you send as ambassadors of your strength, mercy, and love. May those experiencing desperation receive relief and renewal. Prompt us to sing, dance, and express our thanks in ways that honor all you have made for people and creation, and to support and promote justice, righteousness, and goodness in ways that answer your calling to serve steadfastly and respectfully. Hear us now together, praying as Jesus long ago taught disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you stand and join us in singing together our departure hymn this morning? Hymn number 41, O worship the King, all glorious above. And we'll sing stanzas one, two, and five.
go in the peace and the power of Jesus Christ, a peace and power which far surpass all human understanding. And let us go forth to serve the Lord among all of the Lord's people with grace and mercy and love, surrounded by the peace of God, which is forever and ever. In the name of that one who is sovereign Son and Holy Spirit, let us say together, Amen.